everybody. Welcome back to the show. Happy Wednesday. If it is indeed Wednesday where you are, who knows what day. It's a podcast. You could be listening to this any day of the week. That's the beauty of pre-recorded shows. But it is actually Wednesday here for us. Yes. It is actually Wednesday. And before I forget, let me tell you all, I actually have a guest today. And she is the amazing Whitney Wright. Whitney, Yay. how are you? <laughs> I'm doing wonderfully. I'm doing wonderfully. Yes. <laughs> how you. are you enjoying um, the kombucha in your brand new Holly Randall unfiltered mug? My limited edition. L- limited edition because I give you the shitty one that I don't want to use. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? I I do like both ones. I just like... Uh, I, I just like that design more and the pink inside is yeah. like the perfect touch. So for those of you who are not watching this on video right now, um, I got some new mugs made with uh, the Holly Randall unfiltered logo on it because before I just had my HR logo. And I this new tagline that I've decided to come up with for my show is um, forget everything you think you know about porn because the whole point of the show is to like show people what the adult industry is really like, what adult performers are really like, humanize the industry, dispel all the myths, destroy the fantasy. (laughs) Um, So I couldn't decide. So these two mugs, the one that I gave Whitney says, forget everything you think you know about porn. We're here to change your mind. And then mine just says, forget everything you think you know about porn. And I think I'm going to stick with the one line because otherwise it just gets too wordy, but I had to like have them both made into mugs and see it in person before I could decide how I wanted it. Yeah. So I only had a couple made up um, like the one that Whitney's got and I'm giving her that version. So even though she's getting like the, the version that I'm not going to use, it's, it's like a limited edition. Yeah. Because I'm not getting any more made. Exactly. There's only five in existence and I use mugs all the time. Yes. For coffee. I I bet you need a lot of coffee now because you are now directing. You like that segue? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Good segue, huh? I know. Nice transition. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm uh I'm doing a lot of things and trying to balance it out and um it's really great. So I, I love I love it so much. I always thought that it would be nice to do one day to um not really fully transition, but it would be that opportunity would be nice. And it was always something that I thought would be like a, a level of like kind of making it mm-hmm. if you got that opportunity and chance and stuff. So I, um, I got it and, uh, I, um, I pitched myself for the Missa and all her, all her love, mm-hmm. um, those two sites. And, um, because I found out that they, uh, they're they based in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. but they were bringing in, they'd already brought in one director, and um, I was out there working, doing a shooting for them for a week, and I had found out that they had one, and they were going to bring on another, and I've always said, uh, like, closed mouths don't get fed, so I was like, well... Yeah, here we go. If I don't ask, it's like not going to happen. So I pitched myself and I was like, I have a lot of ideas and um, like I would love to get the opportunity to, to do this. And I think that I could like expand, like help expand on it and bring something new to the table. And they were like, okay. So they started me off at a few and now I'm about to do their first feature next month. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, their very first one. So I'm uh, I'm really excited. I, I get to write all of the things. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've written this one. And now I'm to the point where I'm like handpicking the cast and stuff for it. Because I'm like, who like can I see in this role? Especially like the role of the main girl. It's, um, it's like a lot of layers to it mm-hmm. in, in my mind. So um, I'm like, okay, I need to like navigate this and have it be perfect, especially with like the, um, the added pressure being that it's uh, their first feature. Yeah. And, um, and I know that they're going to want to like uh, push it hard and I want to push it hard right. for uh, the upcoming awards season. So yeah, I uh, I'm excited and we're doing that next month. So I'm like, okay, have you picked the cast yet? 
Um, I have my idea for, uh, I think I have my idea for who I want to do the lead. Um, I'm still, I'm still like looking around because I know the person who I want to do the lead, she's usually pretty booked up. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I was initially looking, I was like, okay, like her, she's contracted. She doesn't live in LA and don't know when she's coming back. But, uh, and then I, I come up with like the list and then I'll just send it to, um, Missa in Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin and she's like okay try for these people so mm-hmm. like, okay but uh yeah yeah I've got I've got a pretty good idea and then as for uh um the male talents in it I'm uh I'm having to go back to the drawing board because I originally thought Ryan Driller because mm-hmm. I just but he's out with knee surgery yes yeah, we did his last scene like two days ago and I was like no it's it's seriously it, I have the same issue because I you know am writing and shooting for Wicked now and the there's a a real need for like great male performers but not just performers also actors and there aren't too many of them and a lot of them are booked up yeah so I, I feel you girl like for me my biggest struggle is finding the right guys mm-hmm. um there's so many girls and you know finding the right girls is not so easy either because not everybody can act but there's definitely more options for women than there are for men mm-hmm. so I, I totally feel you on that yeah for sure and um and so yeah and I uh I, I definitely like um like I know kind of like the the names that I want to put to make it like super big and mm-hmm. stuff but I'm like okay you can like get the names but then you have to get like people who know how to act and are gonna really sell it mm-hmm. or else I'm I'm, j- I'm just gonna be like what's going on yeah <laughs> yeah your cast is like everything when you're shooting a feature because you know having somebody who can act because it's the worst thing when you write something and especially when it's something that you know, comes from your heart and then you give it to someone who can't act and they can't bring to fruition your vision. And it's Mm -hmm. so disappointing. You're like, I spent so much time on this and you're not like even close to selling what I'm trying to do. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the part that I, um, that I kind of, uh, mull over a lot Mm -hmm. in my head. And so that, and then, um, I think also uh, like balancing, yeah, balan- balancing definitely um, the performing and the directing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Are you perf- are you going to putting yourself in it as well? Uh, no, no, I okay. haven't. Um, I haven't put myself in anything for either. Like, which I don't even think that would that was a option for the uh, lesbian revenge stuff. But um, mm-hmm. for the Missa stuff, I didn't really put myself in. Um, I, I didn't put myself in anything that I directed um, from the beginning. And I thought about it and I know that um, some people do it and I, and that's their thing, but I feel like it's something that kind of, uh, kind of everyone does is, um, or well, fe- uh, it'll like, also take away from your directing. Yeah, you know? like yeah, you exactly. won't if you have to go in and perform. It's like first of all, that's exhausting. Yeah, directing's exhausting. It's mm-hmm. asking a lot of yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like, um, Trent, especially this is like something I thought of too. Just um, transitioning to um, from the performing side, and then doing directing I feel like people are kind of uh like watching you a little bit Mm -hmm. and being like uh I don't know I feel like like some people can be more quick to judge and be like oh is she just like a token director of course or like just like the face so Mm -hmm. they can like slap her name on it and Mm -hmm. like sell it but I I didn't want to do that I wanted to be as involved in the directing as possible and like picking up the camera and learning and like I've been uh, Are you going to be shooting it as well? Um I'm not doing that yet. Okay. But um I uh I my my um boyfriend is a videographer for a bunch of companies and 
uh, Gamma being one of those, but uh, so he has one of the C three hundred. So I'll, um, which is I, an amazing camera. Yeah, it's so nice. But yeah. I um, are you shooting it all one camera? Um, no, no, we're doing like dialogue and one camera unless it gets wordy, mm-hmm. and then we're doing two camera. But um, I've been picking it up and like following my cat around the house, trying to like focus, like uh, and d- do anything. But so not you're leave still it on shooting auto. pussy. Sorry, yeah. I had to make joke. It was right there. I had to take it. It was impossible for if, me to let that go. If you didn't, someone else would have mm-hmm. in the comments. It was in everyone's mind. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm trying to do that. Like pick up the camera and like follow her, like follow her around and uh, learn because mm-hmm. I definitely want to be like, I don't know, uh experience in like every aspect of that. Yeah, no, that's smart. Um, I actually just started teaching myself how to edit because I've always wanted to, to know more about that because I knew that if I edited more, I'd be a better director because then you kind of edit in your mind as you're shooting. I feel like a lot of times I overshoot, um, which is something that I definitely discovered when I turned in my last wicked movie and they were like, this is three hours long. (laughs) You need to shave like 40 minutes off of this movie. I was like, fuck. <laughs> so um, that's something that I definitely um, need to work on. But uh, I, definitely shooting helps you um, become a better director because I do shoot a lot of what I direct. But to be honest, like I much prefer to not shoot because if I can sit there and I can look at the two cameras and I can direct mm-hmm. somebody, then you have so much more control over what's going on and you know, you know, like if this camera is getting a shot or this camera moves Mm -hmm. and this camera stationary, you know that like, then you're, you're safe. But if both cameras move at the same time, um, then you're kind of fucked. Like that's a cut, that's something you got to cut out. And you don't know that if you're shooting one camera and somebody's shooting the other camera, because you can't look at what they're shooting. So it's, um, it can be kind of tricky. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and yeah, I want to learn that, aspect of it too the editing because Mm -hmm. I feel like that's uh just another way to make sure the product comes out like just how you wanted it to and then like knowing where to cut yeah and what could be like a good transition point so yeah I will say one thing that I've definitely learned from shooting more features is I need to shoot more b-roll because there's so many places where like I needed a cutaway to something mm-hmm. for some kind of transition. Um, and if I'd had that B-roll, it would have just made it flow much better. Yeah. So that's one thing that like I've kind of kept in my mind. I'm like, I need more B-roll. Just fucking shoot it. If you don't use it, it's fine. But yeah. like to have it is always just a great thing just yeah. in case. Yeah, exactly. And then like everyone loves like hard close-ups too. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. so yeah, I, I, I've, I just did one. Um, like the second episode for uh, the lesbian revenge and we shot it outside and it was like, it was like 7.57 and the sun was setting at like 8.06 and I was like, get more, like, I was like, get more trimming, like get more close-ups. <laughs> and cause I was like panicking cause I was like looking at like my, like my uh, iPhone, the weather app and I was like, it's setting Girl, I can't even tell you how many times I've almost had a fucking panic attack chasing the sun. That is always like my biggest problem with shooting outside because it, it's, it's usually, especially if you're trying to get a magic hour shot, it's mm-hmm. usually like waiting, 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 <gasps> fucking hurry. Oh my God, the sun's setting. And like, you can't do anything about it, you know, know. and you can't rebuild the sun. Exactly. Cause like you can, I feel like you can get it at that moment and it looks so pretty, yeah. but every, 20 minutes like it changes like yes. the, it, it's going down more and it's yeah. not going to be the same shot that you saw even though yeah. you do have like three more hours yeah. until the sun sets and it's like the color temperature changes yep the color temperature someone starts getting itchy but I don't want to give them Benadryl because <laughs> because I'm like so I'm like Benadryl cream and then uh and then when you're shooting outside especially it's like don't want to be like overly loud mm-hmm. like because we shot on a Saturday and didn't want like any of the neighbors mm-hmm. who like we knew were home to be like looking over the fence you know yeah so I was like tell them to be quiet <laughs> I know right it's kind of annoying but sometimes when you do shoot outside you could be like can you not scream at the top of yeah. your lungs because yeah. that's an issue because mm-hmm. a lot of homeowners don't want you to shoot sex outside because of that yeah and they're usually um the place we were out there 
pretty fine with it, but this was more towards the uh, the front of the property. Mm-hmm. So because that was the only part that looked like uh, the area that we needed. So it mm-hmm. was I was like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just get in and get out. And uh, yeah, it's um. It was. It's it's different being a director now. Like, do you kind of now, having been a performer before and being a director now, do you see like now all of those production issues that directors ran into that maybe at the time um, you wondered like, why is this such a big deal or why is he freaking out about this? And now you're like, oh my god, I totally understand. Definitely, especially when um, I I, uh, like when you're especially like on a budget for a film and <laughs> yeah. it's like these, which lo- everybody is. Yeah. Unless you work for Greg Lansky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's, uh, it's crazy because the, um, like the locations they charge like, by one, the hour. yeah, yeah. By the hour. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, so, so, and then people, they want to like stop and eat, which I understand. But yes, but then when it's like, like six o'clock yes. and I'm like, okay, let's get this food order in. And I want everyone, I want you to douche and then get on the front lawn. Yeah. Like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to eat like, and douche at the same time. Yeah. Just yeah. Sit on the toilet, have your sandwich. In fact, and, and- douche while you are sprinting out to that front lawn <laughs> because we need to get this shot. And if we don't, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh my God, girl. These are like all like stupid little production <laughs> issues that are a big problem. Like, Eating is a thing. Like it's, it's like we don't have time to take like a lunch. Yeah. Like I remember back in the day, we used to literally order food and then we'd have an hour and we'd all sit around the table, the whole crew, and we'd eat leisurely and we'd chat and ball. now it's like, I don't ever sit down when I'm shooting. I don't ever sit down to eat. I'm eating my salad while I'm running from this place to that place, like picking wardrobe. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I tell girls a lot of times, I'm like, eat when you're getting your hair done. Yeah. Because like obviously when you're getting your makeup done, you can't. But when she's on your hair, eat like here's a salad. You're not hungry, I don't fucking care. Eat it now. Mm -hmm. Because you can't eat later. Yeah. Or like a protein bar or something. Yeah. Because we're gonna just like slam through all of this. Yes. So Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's and it's it's crazy. And plus it's like been getting a little chilly at night. So Mm -hmm. through like cuts, like one wants to go get her um like robe and mm-hmm. stuff. So I was, which, which I get cause it was called and I was wearing a jacket, but, um, and she was like the one who was like tied up in like lingerie and like <laughs> the woods. And it was like, uh, so I get it, but I was, uh, so it was like this last Saturday, I was like sitting on an Apple box with the, uh, cam TV on like the other Apple box mm-hmm. with like my headphones. And, um, and like I had her robe like on my shoulders ready for whenever we cut to be like here yep. here's the robe yep and then like calling out for like things that you need and stuff and and then when um and then like trying to get uh to communicate with the talent when they're still um like rolling I was uh I was telling trying to tell one of the girls to be like do like some some like ass licking and uh which I'm like I don't know what I can say on you here. can totally say that ass I love licking. how you whispered that <laughs> she said ass licking for those of you who <laughs> didn't hear it the first time <laughs> I know but I was uh, so I was like looking I had my um my two uh monitors there mm-hmm. and then um and then my headphones on but I was trying to like wave the girl down and I like threw my legs up and I was like <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like <laughs> like she got it but I was like, like charades yeah yeah I was I was like did someone get that like <laughs> on their phone or something I've done that too where I like wave the girl down and I'm just like spread your ass <laughs> and then I'm, and then just looking at me like what the fuck is she doing and I'm like meh mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so it you 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 feel the pain yeah um, do you find that uh do you think that maybe having been a performer makes you like gives you some advantages as as being a director because you understand what the performers are going through oh yeah yeah for sure and i know that like it it can get um tiring on their end too Mm -hmm. and that especially for um like a lot of them they've got shoots the next day Mm -hmm. and they've got to eat and they've got like stuff that they have to do. So I try to be um, conscientious of everyone's time and stuff and try to keep everything moving along pretty quickly. And then I always want to make sure that 
they're happy mm. because I know like if I'm if I'm on a set and I'm just like uh like I don't know something is not going like ideally it, it's not gonna like throw off my um it's not gonna like put me in a bad mood and be just a bitch the entire time or affect my performance but I know that things just go better when the performers are happy yeah. and they're feeling like they're being heard yes. and respected and uh, like catered to. So yeah, when they feel like they're being respected, then I feel like they respect you and then they want to do a better job for you. But yeah. if you make them feel like they're invisible, then why are they going to put forth their best effort? You know, mm-hmm. they're like, well, there's just no reason for me to give you my best when you clearly don't care about me as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and something that I loved hearing, like, especially during like the features and stuff, um, because I always wanted to do like a, like an, um, even the ones I do now, like, I just want to do a great job and I want to make sure that that is what, um, exactly what the director wants, like Mm -hmm. what for their vision, like what they're seeing for that character. So, Like, just if someone's trying and then they don't hear any feedback the whole time there and they just hear like, okay, cut, we're going on to scene four, then it's like, you're kind of like left in like, oh, am I doing all right? So Mm -hmm. like, I always am like, that looks amazing. You look amazing. You killed that. It's going to look awesome. You totally sold it. You stayed in character through the sex, like just so like every step of the way, because I feel like when... For, for me personally, when I feel like encouraged and I know I'm doing a good job, it makes me want to stay in that same like space. Of course, so. of course, yeah. Positive feedback is incredibly important. Oh my gosh, yeah. And being so. a being a good leader or a good boss is is being able to give that to people because you want to make people feel good about working for you. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know? and like proud of what they're yeah. doing too. And I feel like when you're proud of what you're like putting out and making for someone then it's just it it just flows it's gonna look amazing they're gonna promote it I'm gonna promote it because I loved it and they did a great job so it's like yeah Yeah. it works (laughs) so for Mitz for so just to clarify because I don't think we ever actually like delineate between the two you are now directing for Missa X Mm -hmm. and you're also directing for Lesbian Revenge which is a new site under Gamma yes so I do want to ask you about Lesbian Revenge but before I just want to um finish up the conversation about the Missa X stuff so what kind of stories are you creating for them because um, I've looked at some of her stuff and she has a very, her stuff's often quite dark mm-hmm. and it's great. It's really well written, really in, smart, um, ideas. And actually one of the scenes that I watched was the one with you and Jill Cassidy, where you play the psycho nanny. Oh yeah. Which yeah. is fucking great. It, I love that. I yeah, love that role. Really, I was like, really this good. is amazing. Like an very amazing smart. idea. Right. So are you continuing in that same vein are you kind of making these sort of dark stories I am I am um I have uh I've always kind of had like a uh I don't know flair or like leaned more towards the uh taboo and mm-hmm. the dark stories and stuff that uh that basically pure taboo and miss x does and um I I love those kinds of stories and I've written even a few of my own that I've like pitched to like pitched to Gamma and they're like, yeah, we can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> was it like too much? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was too much. It was, um, uh, it was, uh, d- there was a lot of things that they were like, well, this can't happen and this can't happen. And I was like, okay, I'll water it down a little bit. And take out this. And then they were like, no, it can't happen at all. And I was like, well, then I can't do this story. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Their legal team was probably like, and and Gamma pushes the envelope with a lot of stuff. So like if they couldn't produce what you wrote, you probably wrote some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. I I tried to make it pretty tame, but it was was something that um, they were like, they were like, we love the idea, but... We can't. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. I, uh, I'll i save it yeah. for another day when I can put it out and put everything I want to in there. But, um, but yeah, I do like writing stuff about like 
uh, like the taboo stuff. And I like writing about like people getting um, revenge on others because they've been slighted or they've been, uh, or they like, I don't know, they, their mom, uh, like, passed away at a college party one day so she goes back and gets revenge on like the girl that was with her or something and it's uh it's just interesting to me um those plots and I feel like uh I watch like a lot of um uh like the um CSIs and the okay. minds and stuff and I've always like loved those shows and mm-hmm. the uh so yeah I just love doing the taboo stuff I think it's interesting and I know that there's like some people who are just like, I don't want to see a girl cry or anything like right before she's about to have sex, which like, that's not all my stories. Like right. not everyone's crying, but that's um, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, but it's, uh, but it's um, there. I mean, that kind of heightened emotion mixed with passion is, is very, you know, intense yeah. and can be really hot. You yeah. know, I mean, and everybody knows like, you know, sex, makeup sex is the hottest sex. Why? Because it's, you know, sex mixed with passion and passion can go to extremes. And a lot of times there's all kinds of like confusing emotions mixed in anger and jealousy and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, um, that's why I'm, I try to throw like some curveballs in there now and again but I just think to me that's the kind of uh that's the kind of like genre that I'm interested in and I always lean towards and stuff even like in um like mainstream and porn so I that's what I want to see yeah (laughs) so I I'm really glad that um that Missa and and then her girl girl site all her love they give me like the uh create like creative control to write the stories and stuff and get to do the kinds of things that I want and then every now and again she'll be like hey uh we need to do a um like a stepmom stepson scene right because she uh because everybody does (laughs) yeah 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 because everyone loves those and and they and she's like yeah I I know the uh like the fun, like creative ones that don't fit into any kind of uh, like fetish or niche or whatever mm-hmm. are always like the the ones to do and the fun ones and the yeah. ones that she, like I want to do. But she's like, I always say the uh, stepmom, stepson stories pay for those to yeah. happen. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's something that people are searching for and it's something that sells. So it's like, you know, in the end, you're a business. Mm hmm. So you gotta you gotta cater to what sells. Yeah, and I'm 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 glad that I uh, that she pre- presents me with those kinds of uh, topics, and then like basically um, it was like okay, just stepmom, stepson, and then I'll send her like I'll come up with a few, and I'll send her like three like drafts of mm-hmm. something, and be like, okay, here are the bones basically. So mm-hmm. which one do you like? really want to do and then I'll expand on it at dialogue and mm-hmm. everything and uh yeah it's it's um good and I like it because it's challenging and I never would have written um just regular stepmom stepson scenes mm-hmm. and like just for my enjoyment you know mm-hmm. but um now that I'm that I like have to do those every now and again it challenges me so yeah helps me write like certain stuff and go around things. So yeah. Yeah. They, Gives you like an outline that you have to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Which I love. So judging by what you said was, you know, your kind of genre, like the, the revenge kind of stuff, I'm assuming that shooting for lesbian revenge kind of fits in perfectly with you. Yeah. So have they, has Gamma launched that series yet or? Not yet. Okay. They, they've announced it, but um, I think they're going to make it part of, adult time and then do Mm -hmm. like one a month basically Mm -hmm. but um yeah we just got the second scene in the pipeline and now uh getting ready to do the um the next one can you talk about what any of them were um yeah i uh the so basically the whole premise um of lesbian revenge it's uh it's taking the scenes, the usual situations that have worked in the past for Girls Way or other things like like teacher 
and stepmom and stepdaughter. Mm-hmm. Like So somebody like in a like, position of authority. Yeah, yeah. Parent teacher conference. Mm-hmm. And then or like an which I just did one with um Gianna Dior and Emily Willis. And mm-hmm. it was a nerd and a bully. So it was like the nerd getting revenge on the bully. Mm-hmm. And then like but everyone has like sex in the end. And then now I, I just got the uh Of course they have to. Yeah. But I now just got the um the one for next month and it's going to be, I believe, a cop and civilian or a not civilian, but a cop and a um like a rebellious teen scenario. Mm-hmm. But like which it sounds like like cutesy and stuff but um the way that they do it is they basically send me the outline and they're like okay here's what happens and um he we need to get from like point a to point b um write it so that like we get there Mm. and so I'll get to like put my twist on things and add dialogue and like, so you have a little more structure with the stuff that you're shooting for Gamma. They give you like an outline of what they need and then yeah. you write it in your yeah. own way. Yeah, which sometimes can be, I, I feel like um, both sides are, uh, they have their pros and and cons. Because I feel like with um, Missa, she'll be like, write whatever you want right. and go. And then I'm like, what? Um, um, okay, okay. Uh, like okay, just, like, I need some inspiration here, Mm -hmm. so I'll, like, go exercise or, like, go on a walk and or I'll see something or I'll read the paper. And uh, because I I think I was even – because I, like, I'm really interested in a lot of, like, how films were made and, Mm -hmm. like, like the visual motifs that Mm -hmm. are put in there and stuff. So, I like, that's my my thing that I'm kind of, like, fixated on right now – like uh, I saw in like American American Beauty, they had a uh, they did like the rose petals mm-hmm. and stuff, and uh, they were talking about all the significance of that. And I went and watched it, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's all these things that I didn't realize before. And in um, uh, Silence of the Lambs, they have a bunch of American flag references, and then they like I watched this video where they point them all out, and there's like a big American flag covering like the tarp and there's a song put in when like that one girl's driving, uh, American girl by Tom Petty. Yes. Yes. And, and then they were like, no one's gonna put that in there just by coincidence because Mm -hmm. that costs like a pretty penny. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that is so crazy. Like I, I didn't notice all of these things, but they have like a bigger meaning now. So, uh, so yeah, I, I feel like I can do that with like both gamma and Ms. X, Mm -hmm. but, um, I I went off on a rabbit trail there, but going back to uh, what I was saying, Missa just lets me go, like, and write whatever and everything, which uh, I feel like sometimes it's good to have, like, a, like, a gate or a Mm -hmm. line that you, like, um, you can't pass or cross Mm -hmm. or whatever, and then that's when you're like, okay, well, I have to stay in this line, Mm -hmm. so now I know what I can do, Mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, everything is, like... Up for grabs. Yeah, up for grabs. Yeah. yeah. I, think so, it's, I think it's good to have that discipline. And I, I work for a lot of different clients as well. And I've had um, several contracts offered to me, which I've turned down because honestly, well, first of all, I don't like to be indebted to one company, but also too, I think working for different people makes me better at my job because everybody has different expectations. Everybody has a different kind of structure they want you to work with. And I think having that experience working with different people helps you hone different skills. Yeah, definitely. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I 100% agree because I, I get to... Um, with with gamma they have their uh like certain boundaries that I gotta like follow and everything mm-hmm. with within writing the story. But yeah, it uh it works and I love it. And I love both ends. It's uh yeah, both two different journeys I think. Yeah. They work out. Do you find yourself watching like movies and TV shows differently now? All yeah, the you, time. you'll watch it. It's so funny. It almost, it almost in a way ruins it for you because then like you almost don't just enjoy the movie. You're looking at the cuts and the transitions mm-hmm. and the camera work and all exactly. that kind of stuff, and you're picking it apart. I am, um, and then the shots, especially yeah. with like scary uh, movies, because I yeah. went and saw um, the Curse of La 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 Llorna. 
Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. Well, and, I didn't see it, but I've seen the billboards. Yeah, and just like the um the little things that they like sneak in there mm-hmm. when they're trying to intentionally scare you. Yes. And I, I've even heard I read somewhere that um like certain movies they have the uh, the villain come out of like the left side of the screen mm. because they it's like some kind of like psychology like your brain isn't expecting anything out of like that side mm-hmm. of the screen and when something does you're like ooh <laughs> so. yeah i think your your eye naturally goes towards the right mhm yeah so. th- yeah and it's uh it's interesting so that's what i definitely want to like incorporate in all of my like scary drama thriller movies so cool yeah it's fun i love it so much yeah it sounds like quite a journey you're on okay so we're gonna take a quick break and then um we will be right back okay are you a fan of my podcast holly randall unfiltered of course you are well i need your help to keep this show going this is why i've set up a patreon account where you can donate to support my show and in exchange you can be eligible for all kinds of cool fun perks and prizes which include autographed dvds and books see guys she's actually signing shit free membership passwords to my website hollyrandall.com free mugs pens shirts bags all kinds of really cool stuff So take care of me and I will take care of you. I will not only be able to continue to produce this podcast with really awesome, inspiring content about your favorite adult stars, but I will also give back to you in terms of all the cool, fun perks and prizes that we offer. So please, please support me at patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. And thank you guys so much for your support. I could not do this without you. And we're back. So, Whitney, I have some questions for you from um, some of my Patreon members and also some questions from Twitter. So the first one is from R. Andrew, and he asks, at what age did you discover and enjoy sex? Also, what have you learned about your sexuality from doing porn? Hmm. Um, I was pretty young, so can I say that? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Um, I think it was like... 11 or 12 because like that sounds about right yeah i think that i don't think that's too i don't know for me it was the same too but i also grew up with parents who were pornographers so yeah i was probably exposed to porn a little bit earlier than most people but that but same age for me yeah well about that age especially because i uh i was pretty sheltered i grew up in like a small town in oklahoma Mm -hmm. i went to a private christian school and uh and nothing about like sex or dating or any of that was ever even talked about. Mm -hmm. And I think by the time my mom, uh, like tried to have the, like the sex talk with me, Mm -hmm. I had already had sex. So Mm -hmm. it was like, it's a little too late. Yeah. My poor mom. (laughs) Yeah. I'd already, uh, ventured into that. But, um, uh, in regards to the question of porn, um, how has it like helped my sex like sexuality or mm-hmm. like coming into that? Um, I was already pretty um, sexually experienced, I suppose, by the time I um, started porn and joined the industry. Um, I had uh, I had just gotten out of this relationship that I was in for four years, and it was extremely vanilla, and I was like so over it so I was just trying like whatever crazy thing I wanted to do so I got on uh seeking arrangements Mm -hmm. uh, with my friend Mm -hmm. and we both made accounts so we were like like in her bedroom like oh we're gonna get like we're just gonna text some sugar daddies and get money that's like a sugar daddy yeah 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 website right yeah exactly and I was like we're gonna get some money and just like by sitting and like and like texting them and stuff and it's gonna be like so easy and we like made these accounts and she ended up like like deleting hers but I um I was I actually was like talking to some people on there and I was talking to this guy once and uh and I was talking to like a few at the time but um and uh we agreed to go on a date and we were gonna go meet at Dave and Buster's (laughs) and I drove an hour and a half to uh meet him and then he bailed I like called him and texted him and I was like, I'm here, I'm here. And 
then I left and I was like, I can't believe this guy just like fucking bailed on me. I'm so put off because like I hadn't been on a um, like a date from there. And I was like, uh-huh. okay, I'm like getting and I was like figured that was like a good meeting point and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so Dave and Buster's was your idea? Uh, I think we both talked about it and was like that that would be a good like a fun place and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, and so, yeah, it was uh, that's where we we're going to meet. And then he just didn't message me. So I was like. Fuck this. So I got back on the app and I messaged another guy that uh, that wanted to uh, go on a date later in the week. And I was like, hey, I actually just finished my night classes. <laughs> Do you want to like, or studying or whatever I said, because uh, I was in college at the time. And I was like, so do you want to like go somewhere now? He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm free. And we met and um, we met at... I f- I forget, but it was like a little like restaurant, like BJ's or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was, he was super cool. And he was, um, like, uh, he was, uh, he's like, we got to talking and I told him and that was like the first date I was on from that site. And we were talking about like the struggles of like talking there. I was like, everyone wants to like, like, waste my time he's like yeah the girls all just want to meet at denny's for a hundred dollar gift card (laughs) like on on my end and i was like that's crazy it's like why aren't there any normal people on that app and so we we stayed there for like three hours just talking and uh like getting drinks and stuff and he like he like um eventually like was showing me his planes Mm -hmm. and i was like sure like Mm -hmm. where'd you get those but like we started talking a little bit more and he was like uh talking to me about like who I listen to music wise and I was like um I like this person Britney Spears still I love her and he was like we should go see her in Vegas and I was like okay like sure one day yeah and but yeah he uh um we went on a couple more dates um and then on our fourth date he like um, he was like, okay, I'm going to pick you up and we're going to go to Dallas. And I was like, okay, well, I, shouldn't I like drive up to where you are? Cause we lived like 30 minutes apart. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, I'll pick you up in your hometown. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, okay, so, um, whatever. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I forgot all about the plane thing, but sure enough, he pulled up in like a private jet. He was like, meet at the airport. And he pulled up in a, he like flew in his private jet. Oh my God. And he, he was like, uh, there was like a gate that I could just go through. It was the smallest airport. I thinking back, I'm like, how did I just go through a gate to get in? Like it, cause it's not a big town. Mm-hmm. Basically only little propeller planes can go through there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I got through there and I was like amazed. And it was like two, two people in like the cockpit. And then there were like six seats and it was nice. And I was like, I forgot all about this. And he flew me when we went on a date. He flew me to Dallas, which was like a 30 minute flight. And I like sat up in like the uh, co pilot seat. And I was like, I was like, am I in 50 shades of gray? What's going on? Is this my life? And I was like amazed. And uh, we just like went to like a little Italian. Um, restaurant there and he like bought me like my first pair of uh of like the the Louboutins mm-hmm. and I was because he was like if you don't have a pair I'm gonna buy you one and he was great and it was like a good experience we ended up talking for a year and going on like all these trips to like Vegas he did take me to Vegas to see Britney Spears wow and uh you yeah out. yeah I know we we went everywhere and it was um it was super fun but then uh Eh, it, eventually I started like, uh, getting feelings and I, and I wanted more mm-hmm. and he was just always like so swamped. He said, he said he wasn't married. Um, I don't know if he ever was. Mm. I was over to his house only once mm-hmm. and I didn't see anything there, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know. Like you never know, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, um, he was just like, always like swamped and like too busy it got to be like too busy and we'd always have to like reschedule stuff and then it was like to the point where I was like he and then he would like make it up to me and be like okay well like I'm gonna like get you pay for your flight out in Vegas and I'll come in from Kansas and meet you in Vegas and we did that and it was nice and it like made up for it for the time being Mm -hmm. it like softened the blow but then it got to the point where I was like I can't do this anymore because like the one thing that I want Mm -hmm. like 
you can't really give that to me. Right. So we just kind of drifted apart from there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then that was like my last experience with that. But uh, cause by that time I'd started, cause like he took me to like some swingers clubs and we did some like crazy, like sexual stuff, okay. which, which would answer that question. I was like, why did I get here? But yeah, he took me to like swingers clubs and like, like nude beach resorts and stuff. And that's that doing all that, like, that was so exciting for me being mm-hmm. so sheltered. And, um, so definitely I'm, I'm always like grateful for that relationship. It really, like, I believe if anything, it helped me grow like sexually and really be confident in myself. Cause I mm-hmm. was not at all whatsoever. And I was like, I hated how I looked, but he was always the one who, who was like, you're hot. You're a cute, like, 20 year old like Mm -hmm. you need to just own it you're you you look great and like so yeah he helped me with like my confidence a lot and then also going to nude beaches and walking around like that helped me so (laughs) where did you so when did you start doing porn then like after that relationship Mm, yeah yeah because I am he um he still like with all the like trips and stuff he still like gave me money and like paid my bills and everything but I um I started stripping mm-hmm. at a club in Oklahoma City and it was um I did it on a dare cuz I was there with my guy friend and uh we were like drinking margaritas and the a couple of the strippers were sitting with, with us and then they were like you're super cute. You could dance here. And I was like, no, I can't dance. But then eventually after like a couple more margaritas, I was like up there because one of them (laughs) let me borrow her shoes and I was like tripping everywhere. All I needed was a couple margaritas and some stripper shoes. I know. Ready to go. I know. I was ready to go. I was there. But, um, I ended up doing it for a year. Mm -hmm. I, and I loved it. And I'm, whenever I get the chance to like feature dance if I ever do get the chance then um yeah that would be awesome because yeah that also helped a lot too Mm -hmm. um and then how did that lead to shooting scenes basically how I started was uh I would do like photography stuff like what you could find in Oklahoma you know on model mayhem yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Model mayhem was the best yeah. that there was out there. It's, and yeah. then, and then sometimes like through Craigslist gigs mm. and there were like people there who would be like, Oh, doing like a black and white photography or a boudoir or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I would do like a few of those. And then there was a, I saw an ad one time and it was like, come out to LA and be a porn star and do this, this. And so I, uh, I looked at it and then I I looked up the website that was on there and saw a bunch of like the girls that were on there. Looked at their pages and I and I did like was it an agency or like yeah, a website? It was an it was agency. an agency, okay. yeah. And um, so I looked and I called the um, the agent that was the head of the agency at the time and I was like, hey, yeah, I'm interested in coming out and I sent him like some pictures of me and stuff and he was like, yeah, you look great. Um, and and then he told me like how much money I could make as opposed to like what I was making at like the pharmacy, which I would make more money as like, like definitely more money as a stripper. But mm-hmm. I, uh, the pharmacy, it was like uh, grueling, and I was so, so you're working bored. at a pharmacy. Yes, okay. I was working at a pharmacy by day, strip club by night, and it was an experience. But uh, yeah, I um I was so like. I just didn't feel like I was getting paid enough. And then yeah. he was like, this is how much you can make. And I was like, I'm there. So I came out like two times and like flew back to Oklahoma. But then I was like, if I want to make any real money and do this, then I'm just going to have to move out here. Right. So I did in the model house. And so that was like at least a Craigslist experience that didn't like result in me in like a bag in the trunk yeah. <laughs> or whatever. But What was your first scene like? Uh, it was for FTV. Okay. It was really exciting because I had already done, by that point, I'd already done like swinging and had been in like group sex and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was always really. Well, and FTV girls is just solo girl, but it's also like public nudity. And Well, yeah, yeah. Which I was like nervous about like the public nudity for sure. But then there was a, 
But then like the owner, you mm-hmm. uh, he would do like boy girl and pay for that, even though like and and get like the site like set up, even mm-hmm. though like I don't think the site's ever been set up. But mm-hmm. yeah, so that was my first boy girl, even though it was technically like never released. But interesting, yeah. But I mean, it does that with everyone. Weird, but so um, wait, he shot because I I don't recall ever seeing boy girl scenes on FTV girls. So he yeah. shoots boy girl scenes with I think these he girls, was like, and then he doesn't release them. Yeah. Okay. So it was okay. Like so he shoots like, scenes with yeah. girls. Oh my yeah. god. And and I talked to like Leah, who I'm still in uh, contact with, because she did the makeup for for that. And uh, she was like, when I first talked to her, she was like, "Yeah, I was gonna put it on as like a separate site." And then when I talked to her last, um, I was like, "Whatever happened to that?" She's like, "Man." He got into some tax stuff, and he's just not shooting anymore. And I was like, so the site's never going up. Like, so get that content back. That's worth something now. I know. I would almost buy it back now. Yeah. It's like my first ever scene. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was exciting. I was excited to do it because. Uh, so you you felt like it was the right thing for you from the start. Yeah, yeah, I did, and it, and you know, at first I thought, um, like, I'll just do. 10 scenes, get a little extra money and like get out. Mm-hmm. But then I think by my third scene, like everyone in my town knew. So, yeah, of course. Like everyone and my Were you parents expecting and that? everything. No, not really. Mm. I mean, I expected a few people to know, but not for it to be as big of a thing as it turned into. Yeah. And then after that, I was like thinking about it, like, because I could go home and just get my job. Probably not back at the pharmacy because I just quit that rather ab- abruptly. <laughs> but, um, or, well, I put my two weeks in, but still. Yeah. Uh, but at least at the strip club. But then I was like, well, I mean, like, everyone's going to know from this point on. Mm-hmm. So, like, I could go back. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like everyone's kind of waiting for that, like, back at home. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, you know, they say if you've done one scene, you may as well do a thousand because once it's out there, it's out there and like that will probably follow you oh yeah, yeah. how did your family take it uh, they were mad but um after a while like ultimately they just care about like if I'm like safe and mm-hmm. healthy and happy so once the initial shock wore off mm-hmm. they were fine and now we're still fine I visit them well, that's great yeah I, I just like Flew like my parents and siblings out here this last uh, Christmas too, mm-hmm. just so they could be out in LA, and we're totally good now. They're That's they're good. great. I feel like I feel like if if like I feel really sorry for the girls whose parents like do they're like like just write them off. Yeah, I'm it's like, really sad. It is, and I feel like if you do that, then you're probably just a shitty parent to begin with because yeah. <laughs> I, I could never like imagine doing that to like. A kid, if you yeah. have one, yeah. unless they like were just terrible. Yeah, but even then, I think you know, there's a lot parents will do for their children. Yeah, it takes a lot for them. I don't know. It depends on the person. I mean, p- parents are people, so you know, everybody handles everything differently. Yeah, that's true. But still, um, so a couple questions for you from some more questions <clears throat> from fans. Um, have you ever done a scene that you didn't want to do, or worked with someone that you really didn't like, and how did you manage that? Mm, I think that there was this one scene that um, that I was just told it was just going to be like a rough blowjob scene. And I later found out that it was a um, like a pu- like a rough blowjob, like puking scene was it wasn't for facial abuse, was it? No, no, oh. it was a different one. Uh, no, it was not because I was like, like it's, similar I was like, of- and I even asked my agent, which was like such a shitty agent, turned out to be. Yeah. Um, I think he's like in jail now for like credit card <laughs> fraud or something. But uh, but yeah, uh, I told him and I was like, it's not like facial abuse, right? He was like, yeah, no. And I did it, and then he was, and then when I was like doing the scene, I was like miserable, and I was like, there's no way I'm because I did it, I did it once, and I was like. Okay, I'll like do it. But then there was a. Uh, you did then, it one, like a rough blowjob scene once before. Oh no no no! Like I did like like because they wanted like, um like rough stuff, mm-hmm. and so I like did it a little bit, and then after a while, I was like, "There's no way I can even like get like rougher than this." So it's just gonna have to like finish up, or I'm just gonna go. Gotcha, gotcha. And okay. I like n- like back then, I like when I first started, I like needed the money because yeah. it was it was like. 
I mean, just with my agent, like he wasn't really well liked. I would come mm-hmm. to find out. So not a lot of people booked through him. So that kind of affected me and my booking. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, I, uh, I mean, you must see such a huge difference now being with Spiegler, who oh everybody my God, loves. <laughs> night and day. Yeah. And it was crazy towards like the end of my year, like contract, which wasn't even like a binding contract. Mm-hmm. But um, he let me start, start self booking because I like blew up and I was or like blew up at him. And I was mm-hmm. like, like you're not booking me and I'm going to start self booking and I don't care. I'll like, I'll still give you like the 15% commission, but you you just won't get like your extra, like whatever fee. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was like, I, I think in that four month period, I'd gotten myself like 30 something bookings and he had gotten me four. Wow. And I was like, got it. Like, yeah not renewing with you at all whatsoever. And, uh, and then he tried to be like, Oh, well, um, your contract was, uh, doesn't expire till like October. And I was like, well, I, uh, took pictures of it on the day I signed it that I still have. So smart. Yeah. Because, uh, there was this girl that was with him and I think that they were just like doing Coke or something, but, um, but, uh, I guess you'd seen like the other girls and like knew that he was like, like skeezy a little bit Mm -hmm. and I remember being there and it was like at at like an apartment with like a separate place for like the uh models like bunk beds and stuff Mm -hmm. and uh she was like babe take pictures of your contract and I was like okay yeah and I I had no idea who she is you should always get a signed like a countersigned copy of the contract but yeah it's smart to get photos just in case that person doesn't deliver it back to you because that certainly happened before I know I know and people I feel like people can just like lie and be like oh you oh, signed totally. a three-year contract you can then, totally lie oh and you oh. can take them to court but forget it i mean like yeah. the, time, the money and the time that that's involved people are banking on the fact that you just won't do that exactly yeah and exactly. also too that like you know most girls don't know anything about like anything you know the legal issues and they figure they can just kind of like railroad them yeah so. but back to the rough blow job <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah well i just told them i was like we're we're gonna need to like wrap it up because i'm not doing anything like because I, I hadn't really eaten that day, but I was like, like still like kind of like throwing up like water. Yeah. And like, I was like, and they were trying to make you throw up. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That is so gross. Like I know. there's actually that's, I was going to say there's few things in porn that gross me out. That's kind of not true. There's, there's a lot of things <laughs> in porn that gross me out, but that like to me is just so disgust like what who how is that a turn on for anybody and i'm into some weird shit yeah you know same same here but like there's some people out there that they just want to see like a miserable girl yeah <laughs> so that's really I guess what that's about. who he was catering to but i was like you're either gonna have to like wrap it up or i'm going home because i will like i feel like i'm going to faint mm-hmm. and i'm not going to like like exert my body anymore yeah. because like my throat was hurting. Yeah. I was like, my makeup was all like fucked up. I was like, I was literally just about to be like, I'm like walk off. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, he was like, okay, okay, okay. And then just like, like basically like finished it. And then I got paid and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm out. I'm never working for him again. Yeah. That's why I always tell girls, um, if you get booked on a job, always look up the website or the producer and make sure that you know what you're getting into. Cause a lot of girls yeah. walk into scenarios and they like, don't do any research. And then they're shocked by, you know, the kind of scene that they're doing. And it's like, well, if you just done a simple Google search, I mean, not to say it's their fault, like their agent should tell them, but like, mm-hmm. just always have your own back. You oh know? yeah. Always yeah. For sure. Do your research. You for just sure. never know. Mm-hmm. So, um, so to wrap it up, I'm going to ask you one uh, last question that I like to ask a lot of successful women in the industry. What advice would you give to new girls coming into the industry? What is something that maybe you wish you had known when you first started? Um, definitely, like, make friends. Like, make friends for sure. Like, don't feel like you're out here alone. There's plenty of resources that you can reach out to, like, like the uh, like pineapple support and then just like girls in your agency and like other girls because there's so many people out here who like they they want you to do well and to not be like alone and everything um 
so yeah, basically like get your friends like support group and everything. Make sure you have that because it's so hard without that. I feel mm-hmm. like um, take pictures of your contract <laughs> before you sign it. Always. Um, yeah. And make sure that like no one is making you sign like a like a three-year or a five-year contract because yeah. that's ridiculous. And they, that doesn't mean that you're like guaranteed to make a certain amount of money. Like, right. So make sure you do that and take pictures of it. And also too, like maybe if you can, I mean, I know not everybody has access to it, but um, have a lawyer read the contract before you sign it. Yeah. Um, or at least I believe that through the Free Speech Coalition, they have access to um, legal advice. Mm-hmm. So if you are a performer or looking to get into the industry, um, that they're a great resource for a lot of things. Um, their new program, the Inspire program, is something that's specifically catered towards new girls in the industry. And um, uh, referrals for legal advice is is one of those things. And, you know, it's just like people sometimes just sign contracts without really thinking about it. And agency contracts are so often like contracts that girls <laughs> regret signing the yes, most. Exactly. So it's, and, and like if, if you don't feel comfortable about something or you even question it for like a split second, just be like, okay, well, I'm going to think about it at least. Yeah. And then do your research because like if someone's being like, sign this five year contract or we won't take you then that's bullshit. Like you can find other agencies that will get you work and that won't like exploit you and, and like hold, like hold their power over your head because like, I, I hate hearing about that. And it makes me so mad that I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm just like not going to book anyone from that agency, but like certain stuff. Cause some of some of these agents, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely keep your wits about you there and uh, don't do anything you don't want to do ever. Yeah. Like, just just be like, uh, I really don't want to do this and I'm not going to do it. I don't feel comfortable doing that. And people should listen to you. And if yes. they don't listen to you, then get your agent on the phone. Yeah. Like, just or excuse yourself. Be like, someone's calling and get someone you like trust. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah All sure. good advice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Whitney. I really appreciate you coming on. And congratulations on your new directing gig. That's super cool. I can't wait to see what uh, what comes about. And good luck on your feature. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you they're, so they're, they're a lot of work, but they're so satisfying when they're done. Yeah, it's going to be really re- rewarding when I finish it. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and maybe any websites or anything that you want to plug? Um, yes, I am on Twitter at Whitney Wright X and I'm on Instagram at Whitney Wright XO. So yeah, those and um, there you can stay tuned on all of my uh, upcoming movies I've directed and stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>